Hey everybody, welcome back to Chemistry. And so in this presentation, what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about thermochemical equations and how you can solve problems with them. So what a thermochemical equation is, is basically a balanced chemical equation, but on the right side of the equation is written a change of enthalpy for that reaction that is mentioned. So let me kind of go through some specific examples of this. So one example of this is, for example, the combustion of isopropyl alcohol. So if you look carefully at that chemical equation, um, that first formula, C3H8O, that is the formula for isopropyl alcohol. And you kind of know it's a combustion reaction because if you look on the left side of the equation, the reactants, you can see the isopropyl um, alcohol is reacting with oxygen. And then you're producing carbon dioxide and water as products. Now the thing I want you to notice is that on the same line is mentioned a enthalpy change for this particular reaction. And so the value there is negative 2021 kilojoule. So let's talk about what that number means. So first off, it's a negative sign. So when you have a delta H or change of enthalpy that's negative, I'm hoping you kind of know at this point, what that means is it's an exothermic reaction. So it's releasing heat into the surroundings. But let's look at that number there, 2,021 kilojoules. That is the change of enthalpy for every one mole of isopropyl alcohol that reacts, or that is also the same, that number there, negative 2021 kilojoules, is the change of enthalpy if it's nine halves oxygen that reacts, or if three moles of carbon dioxide is produced or if four moles of water is produced. So that's the number associated with any of the reactants and products with the stoichiometry that they have. And we'll talk more about that in a bit. So here's another thermochemical equation. So we know it's a thermochemical equation because there is a uh, apparently some kind of chemical equation there and then on the right side is a term for the change of enthalpy we're looking at. And so here what we're looking at is we're actually looking at one mole of water that's being heated from 25 degrees Celsius to a final temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. And what we see is that the change of enthalpy associated with that is 5,626 joules. Um, that would be, as you can see, there's one, um, of, one in front of the water at 25 degrees and a one in front of the water at 100 degrees C. So that is a mole of water that we're warming up that we're looking at. So we're seeing that number 5,626 joules associated with the heating of one mole of the water from 25 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius. And also notice the sign of that change of the enthalpy. It's um, positive. And so that would predict that this should be an endothermic reaction. And it makes sense. If we want to warm up water from 25 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius, that water needs to absorb energy from the surroundings. And so that would be an endothermic reaction. So here's another one. So here we have a thermochemical equation describing the boiling, also known as vaporization of water. So here we're taking one mole of water in the liquid phase and we're converting it to a mole of water in the gaseous phase at 100 degrees Celsius. And we can see that the change of enthalpy that that one mole of water is undergoing is 40,660 joules, which means that because that's a positive sign that to change that water from liquid to gas, um, is that reaction must absorb that 40,660 joules per one mole of water that's undergoing that change. Um, so we just kind of mentioned and I kind of reiterated there that you, you, it's good to pay attention to the signs of these thermochemical equations because you can sort of look at the sign and it'll tell you if that reaction is exothermic or endothermic. Okay, so one thing to note is that when you're looking at an enthalpy change in a chemical reaction, and that's when you're looking at the enthalpy change, that is symbolized by delta H reaction. It, this is an extensive property. In other words, the more reactants you use, the larger the enthalpy change. So let me talk a little bit about that. Um, um, one thing we need to do is we can associate 
an enthalpy change for a reaction with the particular moles of reactants or products. So let me give you an example here. So here we have another combustion reaction, and this time it's propane, it's formula C3H8, and reacts with oxygen, and it produces carbon dioxide and water. Now note that for every one mole of propane you have, it reacts with five moles of oxygen and produces three moles of carbon dioxide and four moles of water. And again, that is associated um, with a change of enthalpy for of 2044 kilojoules, and it's a negative sign, so it's an exothermic reaction. But the neat thing is about this is that what you can do is you can write a fraction that sort of associates the energy change involved in this chemical equation and the moles of any of those molecules in there, whether it be a reactant or a product. So here I have an example here. So as written, um, the enthalpy change of this reaction, which is negative 2044 kilojoules, that is associated, for example, with the burning of one mole of propane, which is C3H8. So if that's the case, we can write out two fractions that you see on the bottom right there. We can say, okay, so that means that you'll have negative 2044 kilojoules associated with one mole of C3H8, which is propane, or you can flip that fraction over. And that could be useful in solving some kind of problem. Um, but at the same time, not only is that energy, the change of the enthalpy there, you see associated with one mole of propane, is also associated with five moles of oxygen. So you can write um, there that, that the negative 2044 kilojoules is not only associated, well I should say negative 2044 kilojoules per five moles of oxygen, or you can flip that fraction and write five moles of oxygen over negative 2044 kilojoules. And so you could do that with also the product molecule. So for example, I could write as a fraction negative 2044 kilojoules over three moles of carbon dioxide, or the inverse of that, three moles of carbon dioxide over negative 2044 kilojoules, or finally, negative 2044 kilojoules over four moles of water, or the inverse of that, four moles of water over negative 2044 kilojoules. So all those are perfectly acceptable fractions that you can use in a problem. So let's look at another example here. Let's say that here now we're burning natural gas by a combustion reaction. Natural gas is formula CH4, and we're reacting it with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. And you can see that the change of enthalpy associated with that reaction as written is negative 890.4 kilojoules. So if you have one mole of carbon dioxide that is produced, what is the enthalpy change? Well, remember that that delta H reaction, which is the enthalpy change of the reaction, that number there is associated with any of those molecules and the moles that's in front of it. So you can see that in, in that equation is balanced and we have one mole of CO2 that is produced. And so one mole of CO2 will be associated with an enthalpy change of negative 890.4 kilojoules. So the answer to that question is, what does the enthalpy change when one mole of carbon dioxide is produced through this reaction? It's because, again, there's only a one in front of the carbon dioxide there. Um, that be one mole, and so that number refers to that one mole of carbon dioxide, which is negative 890.4 kilojoules. But how about this? Let's say you have 2.5 moles of oxygen that reacts with an excess of methane. What is the enthalpy change? Okay, a little bit trickier, because what you can see is we're wanting the energy, the enthalpy change associated with 2.5 moles of oxygen, but you can see in that equation, we don't have 2.5 moles of oxygen. We have, according to the balanced equation, we have two moles of oxygen, but the good news is this. Remember that you can associate that change of the enthalpy, delta H reaction, which is negative 890.4 kilojoules with the two moles of oxygen. You can create two fractions. Um, and so it's going to look like this. So if you have 2.5 moles of oxygen, you're trying to figure out what is the change of enthalpy associated with 2.5 moles of oxygen. Again, you can create a fraction um, using that thermochemical equation that for every eight, negative 890 kilojoules released, it's associated with two moles of oxygen. So I've done that there. And so that is just a fraction you can use to figure out, okay, what is the energy released 
with 2.5 moles of oxygen. And so I do that there and I get the answer, which is um, negative 1,100 kilojoules. Um, so again, you can create all these fractions that you wanted to where you associate a change of enthalpy of the reaction um, with the moles of either a reactant molecule or a product molecule. Okay, so what I wanna do is, I wanna do several problems on the board to show you how you can go about um, making fractions from a thermochemical equation and how the, you can use them to solve problems. So let's go ahead and do the first one. So let's go ahead and try solving this problem. It says, what is the mass of natural gas um, which is primarily the formula CH4, which is methane, molar mass of 16.04, must burn to produce 267 kilojoules of water, or excuse me, <laughs> to produce 267 kilojoules of heat. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to write the formula here um, for this reaction. So it's methane, which is CH4, and it's reacting with Two moles of oxygen gives us one mole of carbon dioxide plus two moles of H2O as the product. Now this is a thermochemical equation, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and write out that term here for the change of enthalpy, which is change of H reaction is equal to negative, put a negative sign there, negative 802.3 kilojoules. Okay, so we're good to go there. Um, what mass of natural gas must burn to produce 267 kilojoules of heat? So in this problem, we are basically starting out with 267 kilojoules of heat. And what we're trying to find in the end is some kind of answer in a mass, in grams of methane. So. How do we go about doing this? Okay, so here's the problem. We know that one mole of methane, when it reacts with two moles of oxygen, for example, and produces one mole of carbon dioxide, two moles of water, we know that one mole of methane will produce 802.3 kilojoules. So the question we're trying to address is, given that fact that one mole of methane produces 802.3 kilojoules, how many grams of methane would produce 267 kilojoules. And so you can sort of see you can solve this problem pretty easily by writing up the appropriate fractions. And so let me just write up a few that may be helpful. So again, we're trying to find the answer here in mass of CH4 methane. Um, but the first thing we probably want to do is can take this joules of heat and convert it to moles of methane using this thermochemical equation. And then once we're at moles of methane, we can get it to grams of methane. Um, so let's go ahead and try that. Um, so what we can see is that for every one mole of methane, we have negative 802.3 kilojoules of heat associated with it. Or we could write the reverse fraction. So let me go ahead and do that. So negative 802 0.3 kilojoules over one mole of methane. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna choose either fraction A or fraction B to get kilojoules to cancel and to get an answer in moles of methane. So it looks like I wanna use um, fraction A, right? So I'm gonna write times one mole of methane over negative eight 2.3 kilojoules. So let's see where we're at with that. So what you can see is that kilojoules cancels out and now we have an answer in moles. Okay, now we need to do is just convert moles of methane to grams of methane. So you can just use the molar mass for that. So you see that on the problem at 16.04. It's a molar mass that tells you that there's 16.04 grams of methane in one mole of methane. So I'll just write here times 16.04 grams of methane over one mole of methane. And so the moles of methane cancels out and so you're left with an answer in grams. And so if you do the math, which is 267 times one times 16.04 divided by negative 802.3 
you would get an answer which would be negative 5.34 grams, but since you're trying to find a mass and there are no negative masses, you can just forget about the sign here. So the answer, if you do the math, should be 5.34 grams. And I think that's to correct significant figures. Okay, so let's move on to another one. Okay, next one is a little more difficult. Okay. So the main engines of the space shuttle burn liquid hydrogen to produce water. How many heat? How much heat is associated with this process if 1.32 times 10 to the 5 kilograms of liquid hydrogen is burned? Okay, so let me go ahead and write up the equation for this reaction. So we have liquid hydrogen, so that's just H2. I'm going to put the 2 in front because it looks to be a balanced equation. It'll react with oxygen. And we're going to get 2 moles of water. So also let me write out the change of the enthalpy turn delta H of the reaction, which is negative 571.6 kilojoules. Okay. Um, the main engine of the space shuttle burns liquid hydrogen to produce water. How, many, how much heat is associated with this process if 1.32 times 10 to the 3, or times 10 to the 5 kilograms of liquid hydrogen is burned? Okay, so we have 1.32 times 10 to the 5 kilograms of liquid hydrogen that is burned. And so in the end, what we're trying to do is find the amount of heat that is released. So it sounds like we're trying to get some kind of answer, maybe in joules or kilojoules. I think it's going to be a lot of energy, so I'll put just kilojoules there. Okay, so I think the way we should approach this problem is first off, recognize what this equation tells us. It tells us the amount of energy that is going to be released, which is negative 571.6 kilojoules, when this reaction occurs. And so we're associating this energy change when two moles of hydrogen reacts. So that's something to keep in mind. So we can connect energy to moles hydrogen. But right now we have a number starting out in kilograms. So I suggest we convert kilograms to grams hydrogen, and then using the molar mass of hydrogen, convert grams hydrogen to moles hydrogen, and then using the relationship between the number of kilojoules of energy produced and the moles of hydrogen, get that into kilojoules. So let's go ahead and do that. So it's gonna be times 1,000 grams of hydrogen over one kilogram of hydrogen. So let's see where we're at now. So kilograms of hydrogen cancel. So now we have an answer in grams of hydrogen. Okay, so now we have to get this into moles of hydrogen. And so one thing I kind of remember, for example, that um, what is the molar mass of a single hydrogen atom? So I think it's 1.008 grams of hydrogen in one mole of hydrogen. But be careful, this is for a single hydrogen atom. So we need to find the molar mass for H2. Um, so it's going to be double that. So I'll just throw this in just to be a little bit quicker. So it's going to be times one mole of H2 over, and you take two, multiply by 1.008, and that'll be the molar mass for H2. So it's over 2.016 grams of H2. And so the grams of H2 should cancel out, and now you have an answer moles of H2. So, so far, so good. Okay, so the last step is we need to convert moles of H2 to the energy in kilojoules. So again, one thing to notice is that this energy is associated not with one mole of hydrogen, but with two moles of hydrogen. So what I can do is I can write negative 571.6 kilojoules. And again, the fraction here would not be over one mole of H2, but two moles of H2. Or I could write the reverse fraction if I wanted to. So what I want to do is it looks like I want to use this fraction here. So I'm just going to take this here and put it down here. So it's going to be negative 571.6 kilojoules of energy over, there we go, over 2 mole of hydrogen. And so the moles hydrogen 
should cancel and you should get an answer in kilojoules. And it looks like it's going to be a negative number. Um, so I think if you work that out on your calculator, the answer is as suggested there, which is negative 1.87 times 10 to the 10 kilojoules. Okay, so let's move on to the next problem. Okay, next problem. Okay, when 2.5 grams of methane burns in oxygen, 125 kilojoules of heat is produced. What is the enthalpy of combustion per mole of methane under these conditions? Okay, that's a good one. Okay, so let's go ahead and write out an equation um, to understand what this reaction is about. So it's going to be a reaction of methane gas, and methane is CH4 and it reacts with oxygen. And it's a combustion reaction, so it's gonna be producing carbon dioxide and water because all combustion reactions produce carbon dioxide and water. Now, we probably need to balance it, and so let's go ahead and do that. So I think there's one carbon here, one carbon here, four hydrogens here, two here, so I need to put a two in front of there. So there are two oxygens here, two oxygen there, so to balance the oxygens, I need to put a two there. So that should be a balanced equation. Okay, so you have to be careful here because we do have a value for heat in the problem, so let me just write this down here. Q is 125 kilojoules, right? Um, but the problem is that is not in reference to this equation at all. It's in reference to, well, it is, indirectly refers to this equation. Let me explain. The 125 kilojoules is not related here to one mole of methane. That's what I meant to say. The 125 kilojoules is related to the 2.50 grams of methane. Okay, so that's, that's what's going on. But here's the problem. What we're trying to find is the enthalpy of combustion so we have this combustion reaction here, and so what we're trying to find is the delta H of combustion, which is basically the delta H of the reaction here. And so what we want it is we want it in per mole of methane. So how do we take this information that 2.50 grams of methane releases 125 kilojoules and figure out what the enthalpy of this reaction is? It's pretty simple, actually. Um, all you have to do is somehow take these numbers here and figure out, okay, if it's 125 kilojoules that's released per 2.50 grams of methane, how much would that be per mole of methane? Okay, so that isn't so bad. So what you have to do is basically convert grams of methane to moles of methane. So on the molar mass of methane, um, you can look it up in a prior problem, but it's 16.02 grams of methane over one mole of methane. And so what we want to do is we want to get grams of methane here to cancel to leave us an answer in kilojoules per mole of methane. So we can use either this or maybe this fraction flipped over. So I think we just basically want to use this. So it's going to be times 16.04 grams of methane over one mole of methane. And so let's see where we're at. Grams, methane cancels, and so we're left with an answer in kilojoules per mole of methane, which is what we want. That's the, um, the change of enthalpy for this combustion reaction, which is the delta H of the reaction. So let me just confirm that this is what we think it's going to be. <laughs> um, oh, another thing. Oh, okay, we'll have to include a sign in the answer apparently, so we'll talk about that in a minute. So it's 125 times 16.04 divided by 2.5. And so, yes, I get the number I get is 802 kilojoules per mole. Now, what is the sign? Is it positive or negative? You have to sort of think about that. So what is going on is we have, it said that 125 kilojoules of heat is produced by this chemical reaction. 
which implies to me that the chemical reaction is releasing the heat into the surroundings. So if that is the case, that is an exothermic reaction, and you have to include the negative sign in this delta H of reaction. So the final answer should be negative 802 kilojoules per mole of methane that reacts. Okay, so let's move on to another one. Okay. It says, let us determine the amount of heat produced by burning one liter of gasoline, assuming that the formula for gasoline is C8H18, um, which is actually a formula for another molecule, which is called isooctane. I think isooctane um, is found in very high amounts in gasoline. And so you can just sort of assume that gasoline is made of isooctane. So it's molar masses there. Um, the enthalpy of combustion of gasoline we'll assume is the same as isooctane, um, and so there's a value for um, the enthalpy of combustion, which is delta H is equal to negative 5,480 kilojoules. Um, the density of isooctane is 0.692 grams per mil. So what we're trying to do is find the heat produced by burning one liter of gasoline and then we're kind of assuming that gasoline is basically isooctane. Iso okay, so this isn't too bad of a problem. Um, let's see if we can sort of get away with solving the problem without having to write a balanced equation for it. Let's, let's try that and see where it goes. Okay, so we have 1.0 liter of gasoline. And we're assuming that this 1.0 liter of gasoline is basically the same as 1.0 liter of isooctane. So I'm just gonna write, oop, I'm gonna have to, let me move that. It went out of frame, so here we go. We have 1.0 liter of gasoline. And so let us assume that this is 1.0 liter of isooctane. Okay, so that's good. And so what are we trying to find? We're trying to find the heat produced. So eventually we want some kind of answer maybe in kilojoules. Okay, so what do we do? All right, so it looks like what we can maybe do is we have a liter of isooctane, which is a liter of gasoline. I suggest that we somehow get this liter of isooctane to a mass of isooctane. And once we have a mass of isooctane, we convert that to moles of isooctane. And then from the problem, we're kind of told the relationship between the energy um, that is released per mole of isooctane, which is 5,480 kilojoules per mole of isooctane. So let's first, again, get this liters of isooctane into mass of isooctane. So that isn't so bad. We are given a density for isooctane, which is in grams per mil. So let's convert liters to mils, and then once we have mils, we can convert that to grams using the density. So it's going to be times 1,000 milliliters of isooctane over one liter of isooctane. So let's see where we're at now. So the liters isooctane cancel, so we have an answer in 1,000 mils isooctane. So now let's get this into grams. And so it looks like we have a density here, which is 0 0.692 grams of isooctane over one milliliter of isooctane. And so you can see the milliliters of isooctane cancel. And so now we're at 0 0.692 grams of isooctane. So what we have to do is convert grams of isooctane to moles. So let me just carry this down here. And so we'll just use the molar mass of isooctane. So we see that isooctane is 114.23 grams per mole. So it looks like I'm going to write one mole of isooctane over 114.23 grams of isooctane. And so the grams isooctane cancels and now we're at moles of isooctane. Okay, so cool, we're at moles of isooctane. So the final step is just to take that enthalpy and use it to figure out what the final energy would be. So we see a delta H of negative 548 
kilojoules per mole. So let me write that down. So delta H is equal to negative 5,480 kilojoules per mole. So what is that? Okay, this is the delta H for the combustion of isooctane. So what it tells you is that you will get 5,480 joules, kilojoules of energy released per one mole of isooctane combusted. So what you can do is you can write in here times 5,480 kilojoules over one mole of isooctane. And so the moles of isooctane cancel. Um, so what would be the math? It looks like it's going to be 1 times 1,000 times 0.692 times 5480 and then divided by 114.23. And I think if you just kind of run that through, you will get that answer, which will be negative 3, 3, 200 kilojoules. Um, why the negative sign? Well, again, up here through these fractions, there's no sign. But again, when we're looking at um, the enthalpy change for this combustion reaction, it's listed as negative 5480 kilojoules per mole. Um, so it's an exothermic reaction. So we have to have that in the fraction. And so that negative sign will be carried through. So the answer should be um, negative 33,200 kilojoules. Okay, that's it. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.